Hi there, Dominic the Zendesk guy, Dominic the CX guy. Welcome to another video. For those of you who don't know me, I am Dominic. I am a Zendesk consultant. I've been one for the past eight years. I have been a Zendesk partner for the past two years. I have been subcontracted by Zendesk directly. And I'm here to share some of that knowledge and some of the exciting stuff I'm building and processes I am uh, defining and refining. And yeah, and I want to share them with you. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to integrate your backend. Um, your backend can be uh, whatever it needs to be, right? So you can, depending on the industry that you're working in, uh, for example, e-commerce, uh, usually you don't necessarily use Zendesk as your main, um, let's say, sales uh, processor. So you have that living somewhere else. Either it's going to be um, in a SAP system or it's going to be in a cloud system somewhere stored or it's going to be... I don't know, on a local computer, or it's going to be in a cloud system that you've custom built for yourself, or it's going to be on Amazon, or it's going to be on Shopify, or it's going to be on, yeah, um, an amazing number of, of uh, sales databases or, yeah, where you keep databases. This is just for e-commerce. The reason why I bring this up is because this particular app that I've built, not just myself, it's me and my team <laughs> Ooh, here. <laughs> Um, so the, this is an app that we've built to integrate with the backend system, which is in the cloud somewhere. It's a custom backend. It's, uh, yeah, nothing, uh, let's say, famous, famously built like uh, Shopify, Amazon, Magento, uh, HubSpot, etc. Wherever you keep your e-commerce store, it's a uh, it's a retailer that has a database in a cloud somewhere. So what we did is we needed to we needed to create a middleware script to make the two systems connect and talk to each other. So um, depending on your um, on your requirements, on your security requirements, um, we need to touch on this. So Zendesk has two main ones. So one is basic authorization and the other one is OAuth authorization. Okay, so basic authorization, it's just fine and it's working well, just that many companies are starting to not necessarily be as comfortable with it because yeah, you need to be more secure. So that's why usually companies now have started opting more for OAuth authorization. Okay, and you can do that in Zendesk by creating an API token to, you know, connect to the database and say, hey, or I know the password to connect to Zendesk. So I am, yeah, I am safe. So it's, uh, if you can imagine, it's like a password that you create in Zendesk. So uh, this token, API token is essentially as if you're giving the key to someone so they can access your Zendesk, right? So um, again, depending on security requirements, you either can have a direct connection or you need to have something in the middle that helps these two systems connect to each other and talk to each other. I realized that I should have had a visual aid for you to see so you can visualize it. I want to understand things better if I do have this uh, visual aid, okay? So I am going to follow up on this because I don't want this to be the single video about this because I want you to understand more on how this works and how we can build it out for you, okay? There are already pre-built um, integrations with Zendesk. There's a lot of them and you can use uh, some of the pre-built ones. And there is a Magento integration. There is a Shopify integration there, which works very well, by the way, the Shopify integration. There is a, um, yeah, integration of a WooCommerce integration. There's uh, many of them that work. However, they all have in common the idea that it's just like a very basic integration. So the more you have your uh, data is the more custom it is, the less, let's say, uh, the less it will transpose and show in Zendesk, right? And th these best, best basic integrations are not going to be uh, very fancy. You know, they're just going to give you the customer name and maybe the order number and that's it. But if you want to see the order, for example, you have to click a link, go to your database and see it uh, in the database, which means that your agents are going to have to go in, log in and, you know, waste some more time. We're trying to keep that, make that as efficient as possible. So if you want to have an integration, uh, which is seamless and you can have everything living in Zendesk and also 
for example, take some actions within Zendesk, then that's also possible. So that's all down to you. So I've built over 60 integrations now. Um, and yeah, I am more than happy to help you with yours if you need help. Um, I'm going to show you a demo on how one works. I am going to rely on your creativity and your imagination to understand that it's not just a, um, a, an e-commerce example that applies here. It can be, work in healthcare as well. It can work in uh, IT, informational technology. It can work in uh, tourism, which we've built also. Uh, we, it can work in uh, metal, metallurgy, metallurgy. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. So yeah, for a German company, we built one where they needed to answer support requests and give their agents a, uh, yeah, an integration with the backend, which is a SAP backend. And it's, yeah, anyway, ancient, but we get it across. That's good. So our wonderful developer, George, he's, <laughs> he's been doing these and he's very good at it and he can definitely help. Okay, so let me share my screen so I can show you what I have in mind. All right, so let me see, where is it? Here it is, share screen. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen, good. So let's go in, I am going to, okay, get this ticket and here we go. This is a ticket and this is my requester, right? So this is my interface, let me move my face. This is the interface, right? The ticket interface. And I can go ahead, I can chat with this guy who is also me. So this is just a demo, um, but you will see what this uh, what this looks like. Okay, so this is a test and uh, ta da dum But this is my ticket environment and this is where I see my app and I have a sales database app. So in this example, it's an e-commerce. Okay, so it's an e-commerce store that sells electronics. Okay, so it sells uh, cameras, uh, Canon, Kodak, etc. So you um, you can see, yeah, this is the sales database and I'm going to walk you through. This is custom build, okay, right? So this is nothing that you can find on the marketplace. Why? Because this is a private app. This is a, um, a database which was built from scratch and it's much more reliable and much more trustworthy. And I don't know, it was built exactly like the customer needed. And in this case, um, yeah is what it's going to look like in Zendesk at least, right? So we built this app and this is the our app, right? So this and here, I'll walk you through everything. So what I want and I'm interested in is seeing the orders of my requester, which is this guy, right? So this guy, when a ticket comes in, the, this is the flow. Ticket comes into Zendesk, ticket is being created, right? And the requester is this guy and they have an email. So when the agent opens the ticket interface and the ticket, they will, the app automatically, what it does is it takes the email and then just goes with the email and pings the backend and says, knocks on the door. Hey, dear backend, um, do you have any information that uh, is relevant for this guy with this email? And the backend says, yes, I do have some information for about this user or no, I have nothing to say about this person. I don't know who they are. So in this case, we're lucky because uh, this customer of ours that has written and asks for support has written, has two orders with us, okay? So the, the agent already knows, has some, uh, has contacts to work and reply to this customer. They know exactly what they bought, All right? So um, if I click on, for example, this, this status of the order, which is the order number, is pending and this one is completed. This one is in state is status pending. So this means that this customer is most probably writing to us asking about this order, right? Because this has been completed, this is in the past. And if we click, you'll see that it's changing, right? So, okay, so this one, which is pending, I have order details, this is an order ID again. And then what are the items that uh, in, are included in this order. So in this case, there's a camera and then there's a tripod. The manufacturer is a Canon. So this customer bought Canon. The model is a 5D camera. The serial number is uh, this. Okay, so we know that they registered this serial number and then they bought it from our store. Okay, so from a Target store and they bought it online. 
Okay, good. So I have more information, a lot more information. They have been a customer since, wow, 2016. So purchase date, this was uh, 2018. Okay, so it's still pending. That's not cool. It means that something is wrong. Okay, this is the price. And then, yeah, let's see a completed one. Completed one. This is the order. This is a tripod that they bought. It's the firm for a Kodak or from Kodak model 5D serial number that they register and then bought they from they bought it from our Amazon store. Ah, nice. And they've been a customer since uh, 2013. And this is the price. Now let's go back to this order. So what I can do is I can go to order management. So I can track the order, I can create a return label. I can request a refund, right? So this is what this app has extra than all the uh, pre-built apps that exists that exist currently in Zandat. I am able as an agent, I don't have to go into my database, log in with my email and password, uh, will waste a lot of time and do these things. Probably for tracking order, I have to go to, let's say, a system and then to maybe change uh, to request a refund i have to be in another system in the back end so all in all like you would i would have to ask permission not permission but i would have to be in three systems i would have to be in zenesk i would have to be in my third party where i track the order and then i'd have to be in my database to create the refund right so it's in three places we take all those places and we combine them into one and we're here in Zandesk, okay? So I can go and track the order. I can create a return label. I can also refund it. I obviously don't have any these not, I obviously don't have these connected to anything because yeah, this is a demo. This is just to show you what you can do. This is just whatever you want, whatever buttons you want to create in here, you can do it. So the apps that we can create for you in Zendesk can perform everything within from Zendesk, right? So as long as we connect to the to your database and as long as there is an, an API, right? So as long as the API is available or there is an endpoint available, we can connect to it and we can perform actions or we can send actions in back in Zendesk, right? So we don't just read information from the data, from the database, but we can also write information in the database, all right? We request a refund. We tell the database, yeah, do the refund directly, right? We don't necessarily have to go into the third party and just, you know, waste a lot of time. So this is what I can do with the order management. I can also add this to Zendesk as a custom object, okay? So I can add this to Zendesk as a custom object, or I can add it in here in the uh, in a custom field, like this information. I can go in here and I can say, add all this data inside Zendesk in here as a custom field or custom fields or a custom object, okay, right? So this is very important because this plays out into a much larger picture. The larger picture is to have all your data living in Zendesk, not just spread across, multiple systems right so this is us providing you with the opportunity to keep everything more organized into one place so you can can create much better reports so you can know what's going on with your within your company who is churning what are the reasons for churning and um how do we prevent that how do we improve on that right so we take the data and we crunch it but as long as we have a complete picture and this is what we're trying to help you with okay I also have a day, um, an app for Zendesk Sunshine that I would like to show you. But let's continue our demo. Now, I am connected to this user and I know that they have logged into our uh, help center, so or guide, and they have also visited some articles, which I can go directly and see. Okay, what did they read? How to get started with Kodak. Uh-huh. So they read this article. It wasn't useful. Let's see. They have they read this one. Ah, so they read this one too. Oh, and this wasn't useful either. I see. So I can see what articles that the user has seen. So I don't necessarily have to recommend these articles again because they've seen them, right? None of these helped. So this gives me a lot of context to work with. Okay. It helps me a lot because I can give very, um, very um, contextualized, very elaborate answers based on a lot of data that I have available as an agent in Zendesk. Okay, so these 
this is the use case. And I, again, I encourage you to use your imagination to apply this example to your case. Because if you're not an e-commerce, but you still do business online, this can apply to you as well, okay? So let me close my uh, screen sharing. Yes, so I hope this was uh, helpful. This is a small incursion into what you can do with Zendesk and how you can integrate with the backend. I will create a follow-up video for this with a visual aid, and I will show you how this works, right? But essentially it's two systems, it's Zendesk and it's your database which lives somewhere and imagine my head as like the middleware or the place which makes these two talk to each other. <laughs> Sometimes you can just make these talk to each other directly, but for security reasons, usually you have to have uh, something in the middle which makes them talk to each other seamlessly. This is, has been my video for today and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.